Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and welcome to week 35 of the Stash Buster block series. Our block this week is called Four Corner Puzzle and this one is made with one unit that's repeated four times. The colors are uh, reversed in two of the blocks and actually it goes together pretty quickly. It looks complicated but um, I'll show you step by step how to make this block and I hope you stay with me and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, here are the fabrics that we're going to need to make the four corner puzzle block. Need two different colors and from your light color you're going to need two squares that are five and a half inches square and then you're going to cut them in half diagonally two times and then you'll need two pieces that are one and a half inches wide by six and a half inches long and you need the same dimensions and the same number of pieces of your second color so you've got a background and a main fabric same number of pieces and you're going to cut both of your five and a half inch squares in half diagonally times two so we're going to make um, it's all one unit but the colors you can see are in reverse order so we're going to do um, in this section anyway they're in reverse order this part of the um, unit is the same you've got um, you know your color fabric right next to your background fabric so we're going to do this part first so we need four of our white triangles and four of our colored fabric and then we're going to lay them out so that we have a quarter square triangle unit like this and what we want is our color fabric to be on the left side which is my left let me turn it this way so that'll be your left so we need the quarter <laughs> so we need the color triangle on the left the background on the right and we're going to sew them together on this this angle right here so but you're, you've got a um, 90 degree angle here you're going to put those together with your white on the right your color on the left and we're going to sew those right sides together with a quarter inch seam allowance and we're going to make four of these units so we're going to go straight to the sewing machine and stitch right down there okay, I have my quarter inch piecing foot on I have a 50 weight thread in my bobbin and I got a piece of lit here I'm going to pull out there we go okay my stitch length is the normal 2.5 and we're going to make four of these units I just have to find my presser foot there we go So we can just chain piece all of these together. Now this um, seam is on a biased edge so you need to kind of take that into consideration the straight of grain is on the long edge of the triangle it's on that edge these two these two edges here are on the bias so we got to kind of be careful with those it wanted to go sideways don't know 
why that happens sometimes. Every once in a while, fabric wants to do its own thing. Okay, I'm going to cut these apart and we're going to press. Okay, you can see on the back side that I pressed all of these pieces towards the dark fabric. So that's what we're going to do on this one. So I'm going to lay the dark side up. And then just press them open. And I'm just being careful because now we have the straighter grain is on the outside now, but this edge is biased, so I don't want to stretch that. Now, if you did the uh, <coughs> quarter square triangle method where you make um, two at a time, you would have one set that's in reverse order as far as the fabric colors are. And that's not what you want on this one. That's why we're doing it this way. So we have all of these now. And I'm going to go ahead and trim off these um, little dog ears and you can do that now you can do it later you can just leave them it doesn't matter okay next thing we're going to do is to make this part of the so that takes the triangles and we're going to be sewing on the long edge and we're going to take our long strips. Um, to do this, you need to find the center of your strip and your triangle. So I'm just going to fold them in half and do a finger press. And do that to all four pieces. And then we need to do that to the triangles also. And this edge here is a straighter grain, so we don't have to worry about that. And I'm just going to pinch it a little bit. Okay, now on this, when you cut these, you're going to wind up with two extra triangles of both your... Um, your white and your main color so you can just set two of these aside you won't need those but you will need two of each and those triangles you can use to um, make another block or you can save them for another project whatever you want to do okay so now we're going to pair up opposite colors so for my teal or aqua fabric I'm going to match one of the white strips so I'm going to just match where the crease is I'm just going to tuck that inside just like that open it up and I'm going to go ahead and pin this in place And then I'm going to sew also from this side here so I can make sure I got everything lined up and then I do a quarter inch of seam allowance. So we'll do the same for this one. Uh, fold it in half to find the center. Find the center of the long strip. Tuck one into the other. And then pin it right there in the center. And then when I get to the sewing machine, I'll line, make sure everything's nicely lined up. So now I'm going to do <clears throat> the white triangles and the aqua. And do the other one. Okay, now let's go to the sewing machine. 
Okay, I'm going to work from the triangle side. You will notice that your little rectangle piece is a lot longer than your triangle and that's fine because we will trim that up but you do need that amount of length to do this part of the block so um, don't worry about that if it looks wrong um, just go ahead and go ahead and sew it on because you can always trim it okay so here we go going to sew right off the edge and do the next one and then we'll go and press now on my sample on the one with the aqua triangle I pressed it towards the white the one with the white triangle I pressed it towards the white again so this is another one that it makes it seem wrong but we kind of need that so that we can match these points here when we get to that point so we're going to press towards the white fabric in both of these sets So there's one. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and sew these to here. We're not going to trim them yet. We're going to go ahead and sew them together and we want to match this corner up here, our right angle corner. We want to match that, have these edges even up here, and then we're going to sew down here. So let's go take this to the sewing machine and sew these. Okay, well we're gonna sew these two units together, and to do that, you can match up your right angles here you also want to match up your raw edges and what you're going to have um, is the um, quarter square triangle is going to extend past the um, strip of the other triangle set and that's fine and uh, just kind of center that the best you can and I've got to set it down to do that and um, you should have about a, a quarter of an inch extending out. Kind of like this. You can see on this end here where we have it's a little bit more than a quarter inch but that's you'll get that idea. If you get this all lined up centered then you'll have it. So when you uh, folded this rectangle if you creased it all the way across you already have your center marked and that should line up with the seam in this piece here so you can just match those up together and you can pin them there if you want to or just hold them and then go to the sewing machine 
and stitch that down. So here we go. So now I have that and then when I open it up I have this. So I'm going to go sew the other pieces together and then we'll take these to the cutting board and we'll trim them. Okay, now we need to press these and we're going to press towards the dark fabric on these so I'm going to go ahead and lay them like this and then press this one down and here's the other one so what you have kind of looks like a mess but this is fine this is what you want so on this one now I'm going to press towards the um, quarter square triangle oops I'm going to go this way Okay, quarter square triangle. Okay, so here we go. Now we can trim down the block. So um, I have, you can go ahead and trim off your dog ears now if you want to, or you can do it during this process. Um, I, what I have found is the easiest way to do this is to do this with the block cut uh, folded in half so here is the center line and I'm just going to fold this up now whether you have a square ruler or a rectangular ruler you could do it either way this is a four no this is a five inch um, square ruler and I want a four and a half inch block so to do that I'm going to line up my seam here with this diagonal line and then I'm going to line up the raw edge with this diagonal line and that will give me a four and a half inch block now if you don't have that and what you have is a ruler like this um, get yourself a piece of uh, static tape that type of tape that goes on that you use for rulers and I was going to show you my spool of it but I don't see it at the moment um, so get yourself a, a roll of this tape I think when I bought mine it came in a package with three different colors and you want to tape mark your tape from four and a half inches on one side and four and a half inches on the other and stretch that straight across and, and um, just stick it down and then you want to use the um, seam here and you can line it on that side of your tape right there and line up your center get this all lined up just like this and then you can trim and this will give you a four and a half inch block
Okay. And here we have a four and a half inch block. And now all we need to do is to trim off these dog ears here. So I'm just going to get my scissors and trim them off. And there we have our unit. So we'll do this to all four blocks and then we'll be ready to sew them all together. Okay, so now we can go and sew these all together. So we're going to lay the opposites next to each other like that. And sew the rows together and we're going to match the seams. So we're just gonna nest those seams together so since we pressed them in opposite directions, those should go together real easily. So we're going to go ahead and sew these. Okay, there's row one, and then we'll do row two. And we'll do the same thing, is matching these seams up. which actually would go that direction. So I'm going to press that center seam and uh, then we'll sew them together. Okay, so I pressed these seams and I pressed them towards the dark quarter square triangle. So all my seams should nest together. And I'm going to match all these seams up. And I'm going to I'm going to pin the center seam like that. And then these other seams I'm just going to match up by feel. these up. Now this seam is all bias edges so you have to be careful not to stretch them. Okay, there we go. So let's go back to the ironing pad and uh, We'll press the center seam and take a look at the block. Okay, so I got the two rows sewn together and um, it doesn't matter which way you press that seam. You can press it open, you can press it to one side. And then here we go. So this one I think turned out pretty well. We have some nice matching seams they match really well in the center and they match well on the outside and that's all due to the way we press the block by pressing things in opposite directions. So um, this block looks really complicated to put together. It's not too bad if you break it down into the unit um, and don't worry too much about pieces looking like they're not going to fit because you do trim this block down. Um, it took me a while to get this one drafted out and I, I sewed probably four or five samples before I figured out the exact measurements that I needed. So um, that work is all done with you and this is an 8 inch block. I don't have the measurements for a 12 inch block because I just haven't had time to um, really figure that one out. So we're just going to go with an 8 inch block on this one. So this is our four corner puzzle block. So next I'm going to show you what they look like with four of them all laid out together. If you lay these out so that all of the pieces 
are the same like here you have to kind of look in the center so if you have all of the the color fabrics in this orientation right here so they're going opposite each other from left to right this is the look you get now if you turn them so that you've got got them going in the opposite direction you get a little bit different look because you get this white frame here around the pinwheel if you turn them so that you can also turn them so that you have all the aqua framing the pinwheel so that's that's the difference in this block when you lay it out so you can turn it so that these um, centers the colors are going like in a diamond shape so this is um, like an hourglass design in here so if you tip the hourglass design so they run and meet each other you've got to look like this and if you turn them so that they are all going in the same direction you get this look so you don't have um, solid color frame around the pinwheel that's formed in the center you've got like two a white and a white and then the color and the color but you can adjust that just by turning the block and now you'll have um, in the center of four of them you'll have a pinwheel with the white or the, with the aqua and then on the opposite side this would form a pinwheel that would have the white surrounding it so I hope that makes sense if you make a bunch of these blocks you can play around with them and, and you'll see how they form different frames um, so you know play around this with this block and uh, see the layout that you like best and of course you can also do something like alternate blocks you could do sashing in between you could stagger them if you wanted and have a look like this so that's one thing I haven't considered with the other uh, patterns that we did is staggering the blocks and see how that looks so you would have like half blocks up here and half blocks up there and since when you cut out the pieces for one block you wind up with two extra triangles for both you know that may be something that you can do you could use those for is for the pieces that would go in the half blocks so different possibilities for this block well I hope you enjoyed this video on the four corner puzzle block this one was a little bit of a challenge but it wasn't too bad so I hope you'll give this one a try now you can find the written instructions to this block on my blog and there's a link in the description box below where you can download the PDF format now, if you like this video please click the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and click that notification bell so you'll be notified when the next video comes up. And in the meantime, I hope you're all staying safe and staying healthy and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links and to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.